In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a parametric tower, which is set by a curve in modal space. You also learn how to create a truss structure with a data shift and graph mapper. Let's take a look. Okay, I'm going to start with creating a curve in the space first. Instead of using polyline this time, we're going to use control point curve. So let's go to the from view. Okay. Um, I'm going to set this curve from 0, 0, 0 coordinates, so type 0, 0, 0. That allows you to set the point, uh, so curve from the 0, 0, 0 point. And I'm going to select to arbitrary place in the middle and going to leave it there and right click to end. So I've created a curve that is going vertically in space. So if you go back to the perspective view, you see the uh, curve's been set in vertical line. So we're going to contain this in Grasshopper environment. So type curve, which will allow you to create pram for curve. Right click, set one curve. You see the, um, the curve's been turned green, which means it's been successfully selected. So we're going to divide this into a number of segments. So type divide, so divide curve. So that pram goes to curve. And we're going to set the number of counts. So I'm going to type 10 for now. So connect 10 to count. So that allows you to control the number of segments. OK, I'm going to leave it somewhere around 5. So next, we're going to place a circle in this point. So type circle. So, so we have to set the plane, center plane. We, we want to place this circle into these segments. So connect points to plane, and that successfully have placed circles in this point location. We're going to set the radius of this circle, but this time we're going to use graph mapper to randomly or more controlled manner uh, to, to control the uh, size of the circles. So type graph mapper. Gonna choose the type of right click and choose the type of graph. There are a number of different types of graph. I'm gonna use Bezier, which is my favorite. Uh, let's set the uh, the size of this graph. Um, so double click that left hand corner. Set the Y is the um, out Y output. So from five to ten or maybe twenty in this case. Um, we know there are. We have to. We have to have some somehow five different inputs going into this radius, because we have, well, six different inputs. That we have six different circles. We have five segments. So this is a parameters. So this parameter is responding to the number of circles that we have in the curve. So if we increase the six, we'll have seven curves because we have seven points. So. So what we need to do is we're going to set the range and the step goes, so the number goes to steps. So what it does that it will start the listing from zero and it will run five times. So you're going to have six different you know, data coming out from this range. And this has been set between zero to one. That's why we want only because the graph mapper takes the domain from 0 to 1 in this case. So range goes to the graph mapper. See that thing's been segmented into different, you know, five different sections. That goes to radius, so it will set the size. And it's responding uh, directly to the shape of the graph. So if you change the graph's shape uh, by dragging the points, you see the uh, the points been corresponding to the shape of graph. Okay, so we set the size now. Um, I'm going to shrink this curve size just because it looks it's pretty big. So type scale, so you can reduce it by dragging it somewhere in the middle. So scale that. Sorry. Scale. So, 
so this looks about right and and now it's been well just because that we assign the curve from the from the modeling space so if we change any anything in the modeling space it will you pick it will be picked up in the graph grasshopper environment too so next will be we're going to create a truss structure which means that we will have to segment these points and we can connect these points you know vertically so we're going to segment that we're going to use divide curve and divide a curve in, and we're going to assign the number of you know the number of segments so that goes to there so you will determine so this slider will determine the number of you know the the, the division on on the curve on the cir circular curves so if we use polyline you will see this time it will only connect the connect the dots in horizontal manner but what we want is that we want to connect these points vertically so to do that we'll have to flip the chart so we'll have to flip the matrix so using flip matrix component if you connect these two it will flip the matrix which is a horizontal matrix to vertical matrix so I'll, I'll visualize this data type least point so you'll so the point list component allows you to visualize these points with numbers. Let's increase the size to five so that you can see a bit better. So you see that zero goes to zero, zero goes to zero, zero goes to the next circle, zero, 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 zero. And if you see, if you connect it to there, you're going to see that zero stuff from here and zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this is how you're connecting the dots, right? So you don't simply connect the dots between the zeros. You connect the dots between from zero to five in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift this one to ant, uh, to anti-clockwise and then clockwise so that, so that it will form the true truss shape. Okay, so we're going to use a component called shift. And what shift allows you to do is that it will allow you to shift the matrix by this time one, and you can as assign the degree of the shifting with, again, slider. But this time it will shift the whole thing at, at the same time. So what we want is that we, we want to gradually shifting one by one by you go up by one level. So to do that, we'll have to use a component called series and what this allow you to do, it will start the process from zero and by by the step, which is one, and the count really is the number of processes that you will it will it will occur. So this time we know it will have to happen five times plus one because the circle is another circle is n plus one. So you connect that to count, and we will assign the expression, which is a formula. Uh, it will be x plus 1 is is what we want and this time you see that the value increased by 1 um, so if you connect that see the data make sure the graph of oh, grass when you when you scripting things in grasshopper you will always have to watch out for how many data trees do you get from the um, the outcome in the list so you see that if you create a panel by typing four slash twice you see the data tree formation it's been set you know five times so what we want to do is we want to graph this and then you see the data tree is being grafted so you see that imagine that there's a first will shift the bottom circle by zero which means that you will move none and the first circle will move by one and the second circle will move by two so this is exactly what we want and i'm gonna push that to shift and the list been shifted by you know gradually so you see that trust been now uh, shifted and connecting um, diagonally we're gonna we're gonna repeat this process again just to um, 
just to mirror this truss shape and by Ctrl C, Ctrl V to copy the whole thing. This time we're going to move it by, we're going to step it by minus one. So assign the number minus one. So what what it will do is that it will, instead of running it plus one, it will run minus one. So we'll deduct it and it will go, it will go clockwise this time. So now we have created a truss shape and uh, truss shape structure. And uh, we're gonna pipe this now to give it true aesthetic of truss structure. So I'm gonna assign the radius of the pipe, which will be somewhere around 300, connect that to radius, hold down shift from polyline, hold down shift from this polyline, and this will pipe the curve. And we're gonna do the same thing for the um, horizontal plane of the circle. So drag the circle all the way to curve, to pipe. So now you see the, all the curves being piped. So this is pretty much it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this this point and what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the slider so what I want to show you now is that probably is too dense now uh, what I want to show you is that I want to show you how to manipulate this geometry by tweaking the control points so the reason that we set the the curve in a point control point curve is that you can control it in the modeling space then they will Again, respond back, respond back to the grasshopper, and the grasshopper will, will compute this geometry uh, simultaneously. So if you shift the point by, okay, step by step again. So select a point, select a curve that you create in the model space, and turn off the points. You see the points are there, being created. I'll show you a bit better. So you see that points are there, points are there. So I'm going to select these points, okay? So I'm going to select the point, I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drag this as well. So that's been uh, that's been distorted. So the structure has been distorted now, and we know how to we know the this shape, you know, the radius of the circle is is corresponding to the shape of the graph. So I'm going to go ahead and create a gherkin, distorted cur gherkin. So so I know this curve has to be somewhat like that. Okay, and that top has to be tapered down. I'm gonna fatten the midsection. So okay, that so this is distorted gherkin and let's increase the intensity of this. Okay, this is beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna bake this, group them, turn that into Arctic, ton of grasshopper. So, so this is how you create a parametric uh, tower in a pretty simple manner and that's been dictated by the curve. Okay, this is it for today and thank you for watching.